Hey everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. Now as always if you don't want to watch the entire video you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. In time of Legends, Joan of Arc, now that the legal dispute has been resolved, we are working on having the Kickstarter page restored. All parties have submitted all the paperwork as needed to Kickstarter, and all we can do now is wait. We have received several messages from followers who want us to reopen the Pledge Manager, and we are considering it, but we won't do anything until the Kickstarter page is back up and running. We, of course, want to thank you for all of your amazing support on this matter. Now we have some profiles from the Teutonic Knights expansion to share with you. First off, for a bit of a callback, here are Percunus and the Sacred Tree, which we showed you briefly during the campaign thanks to their presence in the Fire and Thunder scenario. These massive mythical units can wreak havoc on the battlefield thanks to their substantial range and destructive firepower, especially Percunus raining lightning down and setting whole hexes on fire. Of course, these units are central to their scenarios, so we had to make them flashy and resilient, letting you play with them for as long as possible. The Eidvaras, on the other hand, is the smaller mythical creature from this expansion. These pesky little demons, commonly known for living in chimneys and setting fire to abandoned houses, tend to be hard to catch and generally sets fire to everything, everywhere he goes. Also, he revels in the chaos caused by flames, which will empower its owner with some much-needed myth tokens. Lema, goddess of luck, joins the fight, riding a wild bear and providing luck to its owner's side. Thanks to her power, you can spend myth tokens to reroll any of your dice rolls, including doom dice rolls, or attack defense rolls that don't even include Lema herself. If you manage to upgrade her to level 2, however, her offensive abilities really come into effect. Being able to reroll her own dice with her powers, she can attack together with other units and destroy enemy formations with ease, even if they outnumber her forces. Now these two units, envoys of higher powers, fight to restore balance between good and evil. The succubus is weaker and fights using mischief and dirty tactics. She can generate myth cards to give her owner secret and powerful options, but she can also use these cards to fuel her own attacks. The glorious angel, on the other hand, came down to bring retribution on the world, and it's entirely what she intends to do. Her powerful dice and stats make her a force to be reckoned with, and her power can provide a lot of resources to her user, making her an incredibly versatile unit, depending on the situation. Finally, Here's the big burning man himself, the Wicker Man. This ritual construct took in pagan sacrifices to honor the gods, but ancient magics have brought it to life and let it roam the battlefield to punish its enemies. The Wicker Man rolls a lot of weak dice, but its huge arms let it make the best of its results, being able to attack through enemy defenses thanks to its sheer size. Well, we hope these units are as powerful and interesting as you wanted the pagan forces to be. We're still working hard on finishing up their respective scenarios, as well as bringing you the final updated scenario book, which is the longest one yet. So stay tuned. Moving on to Solomon Kane, we certainly hope that you enjoyed the miniature images that we shared with you last week. This week, we're also checking the digital proofs, so the production of the paper parts of the game will also be verified soon. So let's get to the next expansion, the Heart of Africa. In this expansion, our Puritan finds himself in the unknown lands of Africa. This expansion has two adventures, the Wings in the Night, which has three acts, and Footfalls Within, which has two acts. The land of Africa was little explored by the Europeans, and Cain was one of the few to dare to trek its shores and interior. It is full of magic and cannibals, and Solomon will be able to count on no one but himself in order to overcome all the struggles he encounters. 
Unsurprisingly, it won't be long before Solomon Cain is in the middle of a deadly situation once more. And we start our journey with Footfalls Within. Now, the game doesn't force you to follow the storyline of the book as told by R.E. Howard. There are several branching paths that will lead you to new paths within that story arc. You could do better or worse than Solomon Cain himself. More to come in the next update. Moving on to Super Fantasy Brawl, later today, Leo will be conducting a live unboxing of the first mass production copy that has finally arrived from China. So make sure you tune in to that and check it out. This is the final quality material the factory has sent to us in order to conduct a final screening. We check to make sure the final quality of the product is to our liking, and essentially it's the last chance we get to fix any issues before fulfillment begins. As you'll see in the unboxing though, there's no worries as to the quality of the product. Now we also wanted to let you know some details on shipping. The financial situation in China is not the best right now, and the ports have decreased the number of ships that leave from 10 to just 2 a day because they simply can't fill them all. This creates a conundrum that it is harder now to book space on the ships for product to leave. Now, we were given August 10th as the latest date that the products will be on the ship. And as always, as soon as we have more information, we will keep you posted. On to Enchanter's East Quest. Excellent news this week, too. All files have been sent, both the English and the French, and we hope to have the digital proofs that we spoke about last time at the end of the month. We are doing everything from our side to remain on time for September shipping, and it is going according to plan. We would like to remind you, however, that the factory is still not operating at 100% capacity due to COVID-19. And in our other productions, we've noticed that now more time is needed from the factory side to finalize production due to the added measures that they take and the less hours that they work. We will, of course, keep you posted about the timeline as soon as we have more information. But we also wanted to share with you the final design of the neoprene playmat. We've kept the initial design and added four spots to the, for the quests that are new in East Quest and one spot for the wound deck. The mat will remain the same as before in width, but it will be a bit longer than the initial one. So let us know what you think in the comments below. Moving on to Steam Watchers, today we want to talk about the leaders for the Fuel for War expansion. We've wanted to for a long time, actually, but we've refrained from doing so because no sculpts had arrived yet. The vehicles we originally had were great and had character, but they didn't strike us as a leader, and it made no sense while on the Conclave track. So we've switched things up a little bit, and we settled for busts of leaders with their own background and place in the story. So... Here is the concept art for Ava from the High Glimmer Apostles, as well as her 3D render. Artist Jocelyn Millet and sculptor Olivier Thill made truly magnificent work, and we hope to share more leaders in the near future. Ava is one of the singed, which is a slang term to mark her as an outcast. Maybe afflicted by the bane, or maybe she's consumed too much algo extract, no one knows for sure. Though she's mad as a rabid dog, she's been appointed by Archbishop Gerard as her right hand. Note how her garb mimics her clan's symbol. So what do you think? Do you like her art and mini sculpt? Let us know in the comments below. And finally, to hell the last saga. We continue this week with the discovery of the third confirmed author who will participate in the narrative aspect of the game. After having participated for a long time in Lanfust Mag, well known to French fantasy and sci-fi fans, Melanin has since written more than 30 albums for Solil Publishing House, including several volumes of Legends of Troy and Warriors of Troy, but also for Glenat with Chimeras 1887 and Lombard. She also directed the collection of comic books Church Futures for the Solil Delcourt Publishing House, also Royal Assassin, based on Robin Hobbs' 
novels and Roger Zelezny's Nine Princes in Amber. Today, she is more particularly dedicated to the development of video and or playful universes. She's currently a narrative designer at Quantic Dream with Detroit Become Human and Heavy Rain, among others, where she specializes in character development. It goes without saying that like her colleagues, she is also a board game and RPG gamer. One of the mandatory criteria to join our dream team. We are definitely delighted to welcome her to the team and to take advantage of her expertise in bringing depth to the heroes and enemies of Hell, the last saga. Now, make sure once again that you note September 4th, 2020, as the closing date for the Pledge Manager. Well, that's it for this week. Stay home, stay safe, play some games while you're at it, and we'll see you on the flip side. Take care.